Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Generation of Hope and Hope Nation. We are so glad that you decided to join us all this morning. You could have gone anywhere, but we are so thankful that you decided to join us all this morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. So we're going to give God praise on this morning. We're going to magnify him on this morning because he has done so much for us during this week. Let's bow our heads for a quick word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, oh God. Father God, we thank you for another day. Another day to serve you. Another day to please you. Another day to get it right. So Father God, we ask you to forgive us of the sins that we may have committed knowingly and unknowingly, oh God. Father God, we pray, oh God, that you bless this service, oh God. Move like never before, oh God. Oh God, we submit our will unto you, oh God. Father God, we can't do nothing until you show up. So Father God, have your way in this place, oh God. We bind every distraction. We bind every hindrance, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we say let your Holy Spirit have its way on its place on today, oh God. Bless Pastor Dwight, oh God, as he brings forth the word. Bless every, every ministry that's going to um, that's going to um, present on, on this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Generation of Hope. If you're happy to be here this morning, come on and put your hands together. If God's done anything for you, come on and say something sweet to him. God, we bless you. We magnify you. We honor your name and we glorify you because your name's worthy. Come on, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy. Come on, put your hands together. Begin to say something sweet to the God, to our God. Begin to shabbat the king this morning. God, we bless you. We magnify you. We honor you. We lift you because you're great and holy. You're sovereign and worthy. You're the great I am and we worship you, dear God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
this morning. Come on, any free people in here this morning? People in here this morning. Come on, if God has given you the freedom and the victory this morning, come on and just put your hands together and begin to Shabbat the Lord. Come on. Let freedom fill the room. Come on. Let freedom fill the room. Let freedom fill the room. Come on. Freedom has his name and his name is Jesus. Let Jesus fill the room. Yes. Come on, lift your hands with us all over this place. And let's take, just take a moment to worship and pursue the king with our worship this morning. God, we magnify your name. Hallelujah. There's no name greater than your name, Father. There's no one who is higher than you, dear God. You are the most high God, Yahweh, and we honor you this morning. Call me Asha. Emmanuel, you are the great I am, and we lift you up this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. Come on, we go after you with our worship this morning because your name is worthy all by yourself, Father. Hallelujah. We lift our hands and we honor you this morning. We exalt you. We adore you, dear God. We give you the fruit of our lips this morning. Come on, we offer up the sacrifice of praise this morning, dear Father. Hallelujah, God, because you're worthy and you're holy and you're sovereign and you're righteous. Dear God, we don't take it lightly, dear Father, but we're grateful this morning and we honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
all of my words. All of my words. Come on, just take a few minutes right in this moment. Lift your hands all over this place and give them your best worship. Come on, if you're not going to let a rock cry out for you this morning, come on. If you know that God is worthy this morning, come on and open up your mouth and Shabbat the King this morning. Come on, we're in a pursuit of his glory. Come on, give him glory. said open up your mouth and begin to worship the Lord. Hey! Don't you look at your neighbor. You got to go for God yourself. All of the hell I've been through. All of the hell I've been through. You know my worship is contagious. That when you begin to worship God on your road, somebody else will see your worship and it will become contagious. Even as the tears are falling right now, you ought to begin to cry out to God. Come on, Zion. We got about 60 more seconds. Come on, y'all. 
you got to press in. Let's go. Hallelujah. He's trying to break some strongholds in here. But you got to open up your mouth. And you got to give God your biggest praise. Receive my worship. Hey, come on, y'all. Receive my worship. Receive my worship. Receive my worship. Hallelujah. Begin to shout, go, shout, 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 shout. You ought to begin to leap for joy and shout for the King of Glory. Yeah, open up your mouth and begin to shout. Come on, y'all, receive my worship. Receive my worship. Hey. Receive my worship. Receive my worship. Receive my worship. Hey, receive my worship. Receive my worship. Receive my worship. Come on. Receive my worship. I feel him. Receive my worship. I feel him. Hey, receive my worship. Hey, I don't know what you're going through, but God, receive my worship. Hey, I came in with stress. Receive my worship. Receive my worship. I mean, praise. Receive my worship. I'm in pain, but God, listen. Receive my worship. I'm going through a little sorry breakup. Receive my worship. Finances look crazy, but receive my worship. Don't know where my money coming from, but receive my worship. Come on, receive my worship. Receive my worship. Hey, hey. You ought to elbow your neighbor and say, neighbor, excuse me. God about to receive this worship. Receive my worship. Hey, hey. receive my worship. The glory is here. Receive! Receive! 
the old glory coming in now. Hey! I feel the old glory coming in here. Hey! I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey! It's on your own. It's on your own. Hey! Receive! 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 Hey! Receive! Hey! Receive! Receive! Hey! Hey! Let's go, y'all! Let's go! Hey! Hey! You ought to nod your head real quick and get in the service and say, God, this worship is for you! Hey! Go! 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 What you say? 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 Go! Go! What you say? Hey! I feel the praise coming. I feel the praise coming. I feel the praise. I feel the praise. I feel the praise. Hey, go! Hey!
Okay. Okay. All right. Oh. Whoa. Hey. Look at your neighbor real quick. Come on, look at your neighbor real quick. And your neighbor. The Lord told me to tell you right here, it's about to be Christmas in July. Whatever you pray for, God is about to give it to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's the wrong neighbor ever, another neighbor. And say harvest time is coming early. Say harvest time starts today. Somebody shout and lose your mind. Like the Lord is about to do it to you right now, right now. Oh yeah. Come on, hear somebody. Yes, Lord. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 we got to go, but I just heard the Lord say, what you've been praying for over the last couple months, just been released, somebody shout it, like God has already released it, come on, I know it's early in the service, but when I think about the goodness of the Lord, hey, Somebody ought to get loose here. Look at your neighbor and say, excuse me, this one is for God. Come on. Go ahead, go. Let it loose. Come on. Open up your mouth, giant, and give the Lord a praise. Somebody shout it. Yeah. Go. I said go. I said go. Y'all gonna play around today. I said go, come on here. I said go, come on. I said go, go. I said go, come on. If you listen online, go, come on. Go in your living room, come on. Go in your couch, come on here. Go when you're driving a church. Go in the sanctuary, go. Somebody else say, excuse me. But I feel like we get ready, come on. To have a little church. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to be seated. Unless the Holy Ghost touches me while I'm trying to be seated. Be seated. Go ahead. Whoa. Woo. Yida Bahasaya. Woo. I don't know. Listen. I don't know who this is for, but you came on the right Sunday or day, baby. It was services like this where you would sit next to your mother, your mother just start shouting. Who was looking at her? Come on here, somebody. Oh my my seat at the whole side. Somebody shout glory come on here. Now, for you visitors, we're gonna acknowledge you in a minute, but we trying to behave ourselves. We really trying today. But there was at least 10 people that when they, when they pulled in the parking lot, they said, I don't need no organ. I don't need no drums. Because I came with a hallelujah in me. I, you need to be your own instrument today and just shout hallelujah. Oh, we're about to lose it.
You trying to sit still while folk clapping their hands around you? Like you don't feel this Holy Ghost. Ain't no way in the world you can be in the service and feel the Holy Ghost the way you do. And act like it ain't touching you. That's okay. If a few of them people next to you start acting crazy, you just gonna start shouting just because. Whoa! You know what? The Lord said, Hold on. I need a memory praise. I need some of y'all to remember where God brought you from. You looking cute today. But there was a time where you was broken and disgusted. You didn't have no money in your account. You was barely living check to check. You was sick. Didn't have no money for your medicine And God cleaned you up so good You are now a blessing to be a blessing I need you to take 30 seconds before we move And just praise God Online, YouTube, Facebook, in person For where God has brought you from Go! Excuse me. Oh, I just remember I moved here for ten dollars twenty-one years ago, and the Lord kept. Oh, oh, y'all ain't got no memory. Uh oh, they getting all in the aisle. Y'all better move around. It's about to get crazy in here. I remember when I was on the bus. I remember when I barely had money to pay my rent. I remember. I remember. I remember. But God is looking at mama and daddy dance to 
determine if I would give it to them. I don't care if they're three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, teenager, young adult, wherever they are, they got to get it. We going back to the old church where everybody gets slain with it. Yeah? You ready? Uh-oh. I, I didn't play the shot yet. Oh, y'all done already started. Okay. your kids name drop on nine and in person and say in the name of Jesus Malachi and Elias yeah they gonna get filled yeah call your kids name drop go ahead dance mama they gonna get on the way home yeah they gonna wake up speaking in tongues Laying hands on the sick. You got little prophets and preachers in your house. And you gonna sit there and miss your dance. And God wants to give it to them. I said praise them like it's already done. Go, 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 go.
said for some of y'all, I don't know how to do this. You might need to go on and show right on into what God's about to do next Wednesday. I don't know what he's about to do. But God is about to do something for you next Wednesday. I don't know who's on faith. But God done already started it and said it. There's something that's about to happen for you next Wednesday. What's the date next Wednesday? release over you. Come on here. Hey! So into it. We don't know they do this, but the Lord said, now where my phone at? Trust me. And obey. said, come on now, and I'm a seat up a whole side. Whatever that is, God said, give it. Hiya, he said, give it. And trust me that I give it back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together. For those of you that are ready to give it, person, come on around 
and drop that offering envelope in the basket if you have not already given. Hallelujah. wave at our YouTube and Facebook audience and tell them we love them. Those are our Facebook and YouTube online campus. We love you, don't we? Those are our churches and our people outside of the cave. Now, I need y'all online. You better give your faith seat. This ain't just for in person. You're a part of this church. You need to give two dollar sign generational you can give Zell. Generation Hope Church 1 at Gmail. Or text the word give. Amen. Let's pray over the seed. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this seed goes to the work and the building of your kingdom. Thank you for those that had to give and those that did not have to give. Father, pray that you are giving back to us some good measure, some 60, some 80, some 100 fold. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for our youth on today that have served. Amen. Is Sister Jasmine in here? Did, the, did they have a special dance to youth? Okay. Let's thank God. Wave your hand. Let's thank the Lord for Sister Jasmine. And weren't we blessed this morning by our youth singing and ushering? Y'all ain't saying nothing in here to me today. We thank the Lord for her and her husband for such a wonderful job with the youth. Amen, somebody. We thank the Lord again. Thank you, sis. Amen. Amen. At this time, let's go ahead and release... Uh, re releasing our kids for youth ministry, amen. I'm not sure, but amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. No, 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 we're not releasing them today. So parents, you're going to have to just be mad. Amen. They're going to ask you for gum and ask you for your phone, but amen. Do like my mom should do me. She'll look straight ahead and ball her fist up and then hit me on the leg like nothing happened. I, and it would sting too, boy. Amen. Y'all don't, y'all ain't no church babies in here, are you? Hey man, we used to love to ask to go get something to drink. Hey man, so we can play. But mama put an end to that. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Let me give you a few announcements as we get ready for the word on today. Hey Amen, somebody. Well, today after church at 4 o'clock starts our church picnic. Y'all, come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. You better invite. Uh, well, this is for our church family, so if you got a couple of people that you know may want to come, bring them on down to um, Oakhurst Park in Decatur. We're going to be eating. Amen, somebody. All of our members have prepared um, sides for us. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm just going to be a, uh, a, a tester today. Praise God. Yeah, amen. Somebody, y'all remember in the grocery store, and I don't know if they still do it. You go around and just test food. Amen. Amen. Well, that's what your pastor going to do today. Amen, somebody. Amen. We thank the Lord. Many of you have prepared dishes, and I'm going to be checking macaroni and cheese. And, uh, and that's okay. Y'all ain't saying that to me the other day. I'm going to be checking macaroni and cheese. I want to know if you use three cheeses or four cheeses. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to know what you put on that. Hey Amen. Did you bake it or how you... Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, We're going to have, listen, chicken. and um, I don't eat beef or pork, but I do turkey and chicken. Amen, somebody. And we got plenty. Somebody said plenty of food is on the way. I don't have us bring all that food out there and you not show up. And so what that means after church, after church, you just get your little light, a little light snack. If you can't
paint hut off, get a little light snack, but because we have a, a, a very, very healthy meal prepared for a lot of you today. Amen, somebody. Amen. How many are thankful? Y'all don't remember growing up going to church picnics, do you? Yeah. Amen. We'll have some games and some activities. I believe that when you are part of a church, you ought to have fun. Y'all ain't saying that to me here today. Amen. You don't got to be all serious and mean to be holy. Amen, somebody. Come on, praise the name of the Lord, somebody. You can go to the church and have fun in the name of Jesus. Come on. And some of you ought to get out of your shell. You ought to open your mouth and begin to talk to people. Amen, somebody. You never know whose lives will be changed by how you speak to people. Come on, y'all ain't up. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you today? Amen, somebody. You might meet your boo at the picnic. I don't know what's... Amen. I love people meeting in church and, and it working. Now, you can only meet one person. Don't be dating everybody. Just... Move. Find you one person and sit your hips down. Amen, somebody. You, it ain't no from that person, that person. Amen. I met my wife in the church. You only saying that to me. I was teaching Sunday school, trying to be holy, and she was up there staring at me. Amen. She chased after me for about five years, and I told her, <laughs> well, that's my side of the story. Amen, somebody. Amen. But y'all know it didn't happen like that. Amen. Amen. Met her right in the church. We had been seeing each other around for about six, seven years before we hooked up. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Amen. Amen, somebody. So we got to see each other grow spiritually. Amen. For those of you who are saved and sanctified, so I'm thinking you're going to find your mate at the club. Uh, maybe let me go out late night and have a little sip. Maybe my Boaz might be meet me there. No, it ain't going to be Boaz. Might be might be Brent, but it ain't gonna be Boaz. And and and, and, and uh, that, y'all, I'm gonna stop telling y'all stuff. Amen. Somebody, somebody say church picnic. Come on, church picnic. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Uh, what was that other announcement? At least honor roll. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, listen, Night of Hope Chicago. Night, Night of Hope Chicago will be there this Friday, um, August 4th. Amen. We already have over 200 plus people registered uh, there in Chicago. It's going to be a tremendous blessing in the Lord. Those of you who are watching online, uh, who are in Chicago, in Illinois, Champaign, Illinois, Harvey, Illinois, uh, South Side, West Side, North Suburbs, meet us there uh, in Chicago. Uh, we'll be there this Friday, August 4th, amen, at 7 p.m. at New Life Alive Church, tremendous church there in Chicago. And so we thank the Lord for their hospitality. Also, our worship leader, Kim Mark Gardner, uh, who will be with us there in Chicago. And we're going to have a great time there. Do y'all hear me? Y'all ain't saying it to me. Hey, man, you need to get used to this because your church, come on here, is national and international. You are a part, you are a part of a global church. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, we aren't just concerned with fish fries and car washes. But we are concerned about going to other states and cities and countries and spreading the gospel. Amen, somebody. Amen. And you ought not be under any leader uh, that doesn't have any movement. Amen, somebody. As your life is growing and progressing, come on, somebody. That should be a testament to the people that you are under. Uh, nobody should be a part of this ministry and feel like you are stuck. Amen, somebody. Somebody say, I'm part of a growing, thriving international church. Come on. Now, listen, you might look around right now and say, well, Pastor, I don't know, but listen to me here. God knows how to take the little bit and stretch it. Our church has a lot of impact to be our size. Y'all ain't saying that to me. 
Come on, we this is our 10th year of ministry. Amen. Somebody. And and for most of those years, on average Sunday, we would see maybe about 40, 50 people, maybe that on Easter. But I remain consistent, praise the name of the Lord. And it wasn't that God didn't want to add and grow the church. You ready? He was trying to grow me. A lot of us ask God to stretch our capacity, but are you really ready to handle Oh, my sire. What God has for you. Amen. You want to be a millionaire, but how are you handling the 50000 a year? Amen, somebody. And I just believe when God has placed you in an oven for you to cook for all the years, that you will come out well seasoned. Amen. Before we even started the church, uh, the, the Lord had me complete four years of Bible college and then another three and a half years of seminary. This is before I started pastoring. Because he was concerned about a leader that was equipped. Huh? To pastor people. Man, you ain't underneath a leader that just woke up and said, I'm going to start preaching. We have been to school and got some formal theological training. Hi, y'all. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. And within this church, I am amazed at the number of leaders that God's raising up that are in, entering into seminary. Sarah's in seminary. Kyra's starting seminary. Uh, uh, Big Joseph was talking about starting seminary. Amen. So by that is a reflection of the leadership they're under. Come on here, somebody. And so we thank God. Somebody said I'm a part of Generation of Church. Amen. Amen. I think that is all of uh, what I wanted to say for announcements. Let's stand and get ready for the word. I was, uh, my wife is looking very beautiful today. And I just want to thank God for her. Amen, somebody. Amen. Let's get started on today. going to add another installment and I'm not quite sure if this is my last installment um, in the motive series. I'm not sure yet but I do know that this is another installment in that series because you know when you talk about motives you really got to work through why people are close to you. Why they're connected to you. And if you don't think people got the wrong motives mess around and come into a lot of money. says the heart above all things is deceitfully wicked which means that there always has to be heart checks don't ever get to a point in your life where you feel like God where you feel like you've just arrived you need to always remain in a posture of humility amen I forgot to do this let me acknowledge all of our first time guests we got caught up in the spirit slip your hand in the air all of our first time guests on today let's well, real quickly, just run to them and greet them. Go, guys. Greet, greet real quick. Amen. Go greet them. Tell them God bless you. Uh, what an honor for you to be here on today. If you're online for the very first time, blessings to you. Blessings to you if you're online for the first time. Online, go ahead and begin to welcome them. Begin to welcome them online. It's the first time online. Amen. 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 Look at him and say, you look good. Don't leave anybody untouched. If somebody's just standing there, go greet them. Somebody go give Brother Will a hug in the back and pick up his son. Amen. Amen. Go hug, hug.
Did y'all welcome everybody? Amen. Some of y'all about lost your mind. I saw some of y'all in the back like. Amen. And so we do um, five Bible studies on Tuesdays. Um, Instagram. We do Instagram. We do TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom in the evening. And so what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate our Zoom audience into our in-person midweek service. And so we're working out the logistics to make that happen. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody. And so you guys soon are going to be able to be meet midweek, our, our midweek service on Tuesday and come and fellowship. And we're going to have the word. Amen? Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And so this is going to give people opportunity to come during the week uh, that may not be able to get here on Sundays. Praise the name of the Lord. So um, y'all uh, be prepared for that. And so we're, we're considering that. We'll make more announcements as that as we work through the technicalities of all of that. It won't be hard. Amen. Amen. We did Bible study in person here for years. Amen. And when COVID hit, we moved everything online. And then we kept half of it online and moved back in person. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. All right, you ready? Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 7. Verses 36 through 40. And uh, when you have it, say amen. amen. Here begins reading the word. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And a woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. And so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. Bible will preach all by itself, won't it? And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet, wet his feet with her tears. Wet his feet with her tears. Wet his feet through her pain. Wet his feet through her brokenness. Wet his feet through the lies they said about him. And then she wiped them with her hair. Wasn't worried about her style. She said, I'm going to use my hair to wipe the master's feet. And then she kissed them and poured perfume on them. And when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who's touching him and what kind of woman she is. Mm. That she is a sinner. Okay. I want to want to preach from a rather unusual topic today. Uh, a rather unusual topic today. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Now y'all acting funny. Be seated. <laughs> um, uh, look, look at somebody else say, now nah, y'all acting funny.
Many of you probably already know, if you have not known, a few years ago I had the privilege of being on national TV, and this was something that I was not expecting, but accepted it and was honored for the opportunity there. And so I agreed, and the experience was amazing, amen. And uh, God allowed me to uh, have an impact on people's lives uh, that I could not even imagine. And he even worked out some of the bad for my good. Yeah. For my good. Yeah, for my good. And I really need you to listen because at the time I had a very small group of friends that I was connected with before the show. And I, for some reason, expected them to celebrate some of the victories or successes in my life. And we would often talk about our visions and our future. And all was well. But when I was getting national exposure, they stopped calling me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Somebody said, mm -hmm. So I pick up the phone, Brother Danny, and call to check on them, and, and no answer. And I said, this is interesting. These are supposed to be uh, my friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you know, you, you, you really find out who's with you. When God starts taking you up. Anybody be your friend, and when you look like you don't got a whole lot going on. Right, 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 right. Uh, but the moment God starts elevating your life, people start showing their true colors. Somebody say, mm hmm, mm hmm. He stopped calling me. I called him, and this went on for about six months, Brother Michael. You ready? And finally, one of them reached out to me out of concern, just being nosy. Right. Right. And I said to myself, you couldn't call before this? Right. You call when you thought it was a problem. Yeah. Be careful of people who show fake, fake appreciation for you. Fake concern. Uh, Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And I, I said to myself, I said, Y'all, y'all acting funny. Acting real, real funny. Strange, different, weird. We were just cool a few months back, and now it seems like they've changed. You ready? Here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part, Deshaun. Here's the crazy part. I never did nothing to them. Come on, come on. Always kept it 100. Y'all yeah, yeah. ain't gonna say that to me. Let lift that hand for me all over the room. Lift that hand for me all over the room. The Lord said it was not you. God knew they were fake all along. Keep your hand lifted. And for where you're going, your anointing requires real people. Shout. Huh? Your anointing requires real people. Ooh. Somebody said, let's get into the text. 
I like the gospel of Luke because Luke writes his gospel very intensely. He's very clear, very straight to the point. And all the gospel writers are straight to the point, but Luke puts a little, a little more emphasis on his writings. Puts a little uh, spicy sauce on the gospel. He puts just enough on his gospel to keep you eating. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. He makes you think about a few things. And I think he, he, he writes so clearly because by profession he's a doctor. He's a doctor. And most doctors um, write where uh, they explain everything. may not be clear, clear. But doctors will make sure they put every single detail Y'all ain't going to talk to me about what's con what, what concerns them about you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus and his ministry are starting to explode in the book of Luke. We have a few things that happen in chapter 7 of Luke. What happened, Pastor Dwight? Well, we see, first of all, the interaction with Jesus and the centurion. And he tells him to speak the word and your servant will be healed. Y'all don't read the word, do you? Come on, come on. We also see Jesus, brother Todd, raises a widow's son who had died. You going to talk to me? And he was being carried out. And Jesus went up to the casket. Come on here, somebody. And touched the body. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. And the dead boy got up. Oh! He stopped a funeral. Jesus was a, was a bad man. I, I mean, they walking out, walking out crying. And Jesus walks up and, and, and now he turns their weeping into dancing. We ain't even in text yet, but he's about to turn your... Your weeping into dancing. Don't know what you're going through, but he, I'm trying to get happy, but he, he get ready. Look at somebody say he's about to do it. Come on, look at somebody say he's about to do it. Come on. Come on, look at somebody say he's getting ready to do it. Amen. Somebody shout he's about to do it. Y'all didn't do a shot. He's about to do it. Jesus is literally now pulling up to the scene. And he's getting ready to embark on another interaction. Can I say this to you? I hear the Lord saying to 30 of you, he's about to interrupt some things. Somebody shout. He's about to interrupt some things over there. Come on, he's about to interrupt some things over there. And I don't know who expected you to fail. But God is about to interrupt some things for you. Somebody leave up and say he's about to interrupt it. He's about to interrupt it. He's about to interrupt it. Come on, shot. He's about to interrupt it. Come on. Whatever you thought would not work. He's about to interrupt it. Now, can we, get, can we get into this? All right, let's go. There's a Pharisee that had invited Jesus to his house. He says, come on, bro. Come on to the house. Sit down with me. Let's talk. Let's fellowship. I want to get to know you more intricately. Verse 36 says, you ready? When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Now, there were some Pharisees uh, are known, you listening, to be a religious group of people. All right. An uppity, Brother Donnell, an uppity group of people. Folk that you had to do everything right or they look down on you. Y'all don't know no people like that. You, 
You, you feel under pressure when you're around them. I got to do everything right because they're going to make you feel like you don't fit in the circle. Well, I got news for you. I never fit in the circle. And what is your circle? Come on here, somebody. I don't need to be a part of your circle to feel accepted, do I? And that's what's unique about you is because you always break the mold. You don't never fit into people's circles. Yeah. And so people would talk about you negatively when you don't fit into their clique. Because lay your hand in your head, say, I got a mind of my own. And people hate when you think for yourself. <laughs> oh, we ain't even in the world. They, they hate when you got your own goals, don't they? They hate when you got your own vision, don't they? They hate when you got your own strategy, don't they? They cannot stand you because you don't need And when you don't need them, they got a problem with you. There are some people right now that are mad at you because you walked away. And then they realize, you know what? They was a diamond all along. I messed up. Somebody shout, it's too late now. It's too late. It's, uh, don't act like we cool now. It's too late. Don't, don't. Don't try to buddy buddy me. Nah, you had buddy passes last year. You played me and gave it to somebody who don't even like you. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Come on here, somebody. I invited you to dinner and you didn't even want to come to dinner with me because you didn't want to be seen with me. But all of a sudden now that God has increased my salary and increased what he did for me. Come on, you all of a sudden want to take credit for what he did. It's too late now. Oh, no, absolutely not. I was cute before you got here. I don't need you to tell me I was cute. I knew how I, I, come on, I ain't being puffed up. I know who I am. Come on, you can call me what you want. I know how God made me. And he didn't ask you for your approval. Because if you have not heard, I am fearfully. And wonderfully made. Come on here, somebody. You ain't got to like me good. I know who I am. You ain't got to let me in good. I was born with a purpose. Come on, somebody. I got an assignment on my life, and you can't stop it. This was wrong with some people. They think they can stop what God is doing in your life, but I bind every nasty devil that would try to come against what God is doing for you. God is about to make a fool out of them. And the devil will always flee seven ways. You see, be seated. But the Lord said you don't need their approval. You do not need their approval. Uh, let me go deeper. It's some of y'all who got some family members that think you need their approval to make the next move, baby. The first thing God told Abram was get away from these crazy kid folk and go to a land. I'll show you because they going to mess you up, man. I love you. We got the same blood, but we can't go but so far now because I got y'all got to get out of my house by 6 o'clock because y'all going to start acting a fool and cussing and drinking and I don't ask for me in my house. I don't care if we related. You crazy. You need a psychologist. You need to get some counseling for a whole year straight every day. three hours mandatory all right let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go so y'all can get to the picnic you ready all right all right all right he's at the Pharisee's house he's at the Pharisee's house and a woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house so, so, 
Alicia, she came there. A sinner comes in the house with the Holy One. Oh, I, okay. Now, let, let, let's do a little exegetical study. Um, um, some theologians tell us that this woman not only was a sinner, but for a living, we got kids in the room, she gave her body away. Y'all don't know what I'm saying. Adults, you know what I'm saying. Um, um, she got paid to give her body away. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew her. Everybody knew it, and everybody knew her. They called her, uh, some, some theologians called her a strumpet. A strumpet. I don't even know what that is. But it, the word sounds like she was doing something. <laughs> it was bold, Celeste, for a woman with a sinful reputation to come into the house with the church folk. But she was willing to do anything to express her love for Jesus. I, I don't care what I got into. When I need them, I, I need them. And for some of you who are still in the streets, there's something that the streets can never do. Let, let me help you. Let me help you. I wrote a book on it. I wrote a book on lust. Let me help you. Here it is. 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 Lust can never be satisfied. You always want more. You always want more. You always want more. And that'll do right now. But I want a little more. And that'll do right now. But I want a little more. And I want a little more. And I want a little more. And I want a little more. I want a little more. And 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 what happens is, what happens is you eventually end up depleted. Because lust is a smoke screen. It's a temporary fulfillment. Y'all ain't gonna talk to the preacher today. That's why, let me cross-reference, that's why when Jesus met the woman at the well, which is another text, she was trying to draw out water, and she was coming on to Jesus very pro uh, in a provocative way. And Jesus says, oh, I, I ain't the one. Uh-huh, yeah. See, you done been with a few people, a th third one and a fourth one and a fifth one, but when you drink this water, this is some different type of water right here. I ain't talking about vitamin water. Uh, come on here, somebody. I ain't talking about Fiji. Come on here, somebody. I, 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 I ain't talking about smart water. I, I'm talking about this holy water. I, I'm talking about you come get some of this water. And baby, whatever you desired in the flesh going to be gone. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. All right, let's go. Let's go. We don't have long. Let me get to give you this. Let's go. Point one. Point one. Point one. Some, some point one. Some people will act funny this year because you got you got in without an invitation. Some people will act funny this year towards you because you got in without an invitation. I don't know who this is for, Samario, but God said your desire for him this year is going to open up doors. Shout. Yeah. Invitation. Shout. Yeah. She walks in with no invitation or reservation yeah, and says, Brother Gerald, I need Jesus. Yeah. Some people can't handle when you, you're going to talk to me when you just show up. Because your anointing on your life, come on, will always break protocol. See, there are some people that are around you that are acting really funny because, you ready? You did not go through the steps they went through. But God let you in. 
because most of the people that did get invitations to sit with Jesus, the Pharisees, you ready, did not have a heart for him. But the one who did not get an invitation has a heart for the one that's in the house. Y'all better help me preach because I'm going to get you today. All them collars and crosses on and don't none of them, Sister Ebony and Jonathan, want Jesus. But the one who's on the outside of the circle actually has a heart for the master. That's why you can't judge people by how they look and disqualify people because they are not where you are. Because the person who you assume to be the furthest from God might actually be the closest to God. Somebody shout, I got a heart for the king. Come on. We're going to have church. Somebody shout, I got a heart for the king. Uh, I need at least 30 of y'all to shout. You ready? We I just need you to leap up and sit down. We ain't going to lose the service. I got to get through this. You ready? Here it is. The Lord says this season, people are going to wonder how you got in the room. Go. Be seated. They're going to wonder how in the world did you get the promotion? How in the world did you get the job and I've been here longer? How in the world do you get in the room? Because most of your life, people are fighting you from getting into the room. But the people who are fighting you from getting into the room, God said for 30 of you, he's about to skip you over them. I just need two people to turn around and say, he's about to skip me over. Everybody try to lock the door. I'm gone. I'm gone, baby. He oh, God. She got in with no invitation. I don't know who's waiting for invitations. I don't know who's waiting for invitations. I don't know who's waiting to be invited. I don't know who's waiting to be invited. But God said, you're so anointed, you can build your own stage. Come on here. You're, you're so anointed, you don't need their approvals. You're so anointed, your anointing causes a demand for you to get into rooms that nobody else had access for. I was at Lakewood Church last year, last year, touring Lakewood Church. Staff came up to me, says, well, we, we met you on, or we know you from TikTok. They took me up to a floor that nobody else has access to but the staff. I said, Pastor Buckner, I want to tell you this, man, that nobody's been through these doors but staff, and so we're going to go ahead and let you in because you're from out of town. We want to give you a tour. They're giving me the red carpet. You would have thought I was preaching on stage. But... I said, come on in the room, man. Let me show you around. And, and the Lord dealt with me as I was on my way down from the elevator in Houston, and, and he said to me, he says, this is the season that you and the church are going to enter into in a couple of years. He says, I'm going to give you access to stuff that other people can't walk in. Because I can trust you. Come on here, somebody. And some of you are about to be in some doors that other people can't get into. Come on here, God. Do y'all remember when Moses was going through, uh, uh, going through the Red Sea? He let them through, but he shut the door and said, "Now, nah, Pharaoh, y'all can't come in this because this is for them. And if you try to come in where they are, I'm going to knock it on you and you're going to drown with the waves. And there's some people that are going to try to get in on your promotion, but they ain't going to make it. All right, let's go. Okay, somebody say go deeper. All right. She came there with an alabaster box, a jar of perfume. A sinner comes in the house with Jesus with a, a flask, a flask. It says an alabaster box, but it was really a flask that was suspended from women's necks with a neck would perfume it. She walked in with it. Now, 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 she would only use this perfume on certain occasions. 
because this perfume smelled in such a way to where people would wonder where it came from. It was expensive perfume. Where are my women that know uh, about how expensive perfume can get? Y'all don't go shopping a little bit. You, you got to know how much expensive perfume can get. And this perfume was so expensive that you can only get it one place. She had to climb up a mountain and grab a plant called a spikenard plant. It took one day's journey to go up the mountain and get this one plant. And after she got the plant, she came back down the mountain. And the only way to get the perfume out was to crush the leaves on the plant. This ain't even in my notes, but God is saying the crushing you've been through is bringing out more oil. Come on, here somebody. The, the lies that were told on you is bringing out more oil. And the more they step on you and the more they crush you and the more they talk about you, God says the more oil, the more residue of this perfume is, is, is coming out of your life. And now your anointing is starting to be contagious because the more they crush you, the more oil will fall. The more they crush you, the more oil will fall. The the more they crush you, the more the oil will flow. Can I give you a point too? Some people are acting funny towards you this year because you have something to offer. You got something to offer. You ready? You ready? There are some people that are mad at you because you don't just show up with good looks. You don't just show up with style and swagger. You don't just show up looking ready for the position. But you show up uh, with a gift. There are some people that are treating you funny right now and it hurts. You ready? But they have no idea of the pain you went through to carry what you carry. And I don't need an invitation. You ready to shout? Because my oil on my life has an open door policy. Yes. I can walk into any room after, come on here somebody. I can walk into any room that I want to because the oil that rests on my life demands attention. It demands, see, you ain't just showing up in the room to be seen, but God says, I need your oil to be in the room because you know how to shift the atmosphere. Some of y'all are worried about looking cute, but baby when I came in here the entire atmosphere shifted because they said oh my god there's somebody that came in here that's been broken and hurting and, and, and struggling and dealing with all kind of issues but baby this is why you cannot give up and throw in the towel and lose who you are and jump off a bridge and take the pills and think your life is over with because you gotta understand that you have a once in a lifetime anointing that shifts the entire atmosphere Georgia will never be the same you know why because I'm here. Come on, here, somebody. The world will never be the same because I'm here. The kingdom will never be the same because whenever I showed up, I shifted. Yeah. Somebody shout, shift the atmosphere. Come on, somebody shout, shift the atmosphere. You don't have a regular anointing. You have an anointing to shift the atmosphere. Oh, let's shout. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's why when you show up at work, people get mad because they said the shifter is here. The shifter is here. The shifter is here. You thought they was making fun of you. You thought they was laughing at your car, but they're mad because the shifter is here. Yes, I'm talking to some people online that are mad at you because the shifter showed up and there's no way God could put me in any type of situation and it stay the same. You can't stay the same around me because I'm a shifter. You can't act the same around me because I'm a shifter. You can't talk about me like a dog because I'm a shifter. If you cuss it, you got to change it. If you're laughing, you got to stop it. If you're acting a fool, you got to straighten up. That's what I love about my grandmother who went to be with the Lord. Whenever she showed up, it shifted. People shut up. They got still because they realized you are in the presence of greatness. And I demand attention. I gotta go. Be seated. Let me get these last two. We done. Somebody shout, I'm a shifter. Don't you get it twisted, I'm a shifter. My praise will shift the atmosphere. 
my shout will shift the atmosphere. My hallelujah will shift the atmosphere. My dance will shift the atmosphere. My leap will shift the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll shift. As she stood behind him. You ready? Now, she's in the room. She got in there. No invitation. She's standing behind Jesus. Um, let's go. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to cry. And, and her tears had to fall somewhere. God is so detailed. That he'll direct your tears. <laughs> Splash. <laughs> Splash. Notice they didn't, they weren't all over her. He, he's so powerful. He directed her. He directed her tears. Huh? Here it is. God is using some of y'all's tears to fertilize your future. All right, all right, all right. You thought you were wasting tears. But God says, no, I've been catching all of your tears in a flash. And I've been using tears from 98 and 2010 and 2018. And I've been getting, I've been gathering your tears from 2020 and 2021. And I've been gathering tears from earlier this year. And I'm going to use your tears from 95 or how mama lied. And I'm going to use your tears, come on here, from 2002 when you got here. And I'm going to use your tears in 2004. And I'm going to use your tears when you lost them. And I'm going, I'm going to use all of your tears and fertilize This is good fertilization. This helps you grow. This helps you mature. This helps you to matriculate through life. And I'm going to use every last one of your tears. I'm going to direct your tears towards my feet. Which brings me to point three. Some people are acting funny because your worship is not about them. Some people are acting funny because your worship is not about them. She did not come to the house. You ready? For the Pharisees. Even though it was their house. She did not come for any of the disciples. She didn't come for Peter. Lisa, she didn't come for James. She didn't come for John. Bartholomew, Timothy, Judas, she didn't come for none of them. She came for Jesus. There's some people who start acting funny with you when they find out you showed up at church for Jesus and not them. I did not come to look at you. I know we got history. Ah, uh, yeah. I know we went out a few times, and you might look okay today, but I did not come for you, baby. I, I, I didn't come for you. I only came for one person. I came for Jesus, and don't let anybody stop you from getting to the master of the table. I did not come for them. I came for Jesus. <laughs> mad because you're not running after them and and they thought that it was all about them the Pharisee says this girl came here for us bro I know I look good I know I, I know she here to see this cross on me I know she here to look around at my house and she walked past them and said, Fool, I ain't, I ain't even thinking about you. It's the one that's in front of you that I want to see. I 
came to get something from Jesus. He can do something supernaturally. Y'all just looking at me because I'm cute and because I got a name for myself. But I came to get Jesus. And sometimes you got to press past what people put on you to get the king. Look at somebody and say, I ain't come here for you. I'm glad you're here, but I ain't come here for you because you can't change my situation. You can't heal my body. You can't make all things new. You can't relieve my stress. You can't make me feel better. I like you, but you can't help me. I came to get something from the Lord. See, they can't handle it. They can't handle it. She walked in the room. She she walked up in the room, said, I came here for Jesus. I, I came here for Jesus. I'm trying to get to the king. Excuse me, watch out. I'm trying to move, move out of the way. I'm trying to, excuse me, man. I'm trying to get to Jesus. Watch out, watch out, watch out. I'm trying to get to Jesus. I'm trying to, I saw you already. I'm trying to get to Jesus. I get back with you. I'm trying to get. They are flabbergasted. They can't believe that this woman came for Jesus. Who does she think she is? Coming in this sacred holy house and got the audacity to walk past the one that owns it because she knew you didn't really own it. It was Jesus. Oh, I want you to know that when Jesus is in the house, he owns the house. He owns a house and everything in it, baby. I See, when Jesus walked into the house, Shanique, he did not walk in the house thinking that this is the Pharisees. When he walked in the house, he says, this is my house. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in here today. This is my house. I know you invited me to something, but you're only inviting me to what's mine. I'm walking into what's already mine, bro. Sit down. I'm here now. I gave you the house. I put you in the house. Who you think put you in the house? Hey, who you think put you in here? And when people find out God is transforming your life, you ready? And that you did not come to church for them, all right, they start acting brand new. A lot of y'all got some folk around you, and boy, they start to act brand new. That's why some of y'all shouldn't go back to your hometown that often. Because there's always a group of people that gonna act brand new. Well, who do they think they are? I knew that when they was a baby. I saw them when they first got married. I knew when they went to high school. I knew when they went to college. I knew when they lost everything. I knew when they had some money. I knew when they was broke. I don't care what you know. When God transformed my life, everything you think you know, you don't know no more. Created me a clean heart and renew within me the right spirit. You don't know me, man. Because when God begins to transform you, he takes the old man up out of you and the old man walks away and the new man stands up. Don't you call me that no more. I won't be what you call me no more. I won't listen and respond to what you call me no more. And some of y'all responded, some of y'all respond to what people say about you. You've been saved all this time and they still calling you a drunk. Still saying you sleep around. Still lying and saying you got the wrong motive. And this is coming from people that never took out time to get to know you. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me today. I'm gonna get to you because some of y'all got some people that are making up blogs and defamation of character and lying about your name and what you did and they never took out two cents to call you to find out who you really are. Come on, and you got to be careful of people that will go out of their way to say a negative word about you and they never talk to you on the phone. They never had a conversation with you. They never went to dinner with you. They never had nothing to eat. The devil is a liar. Baby, you don't know me. I got to go for real now. He 
he directed her tears. Then she did something very unorthodox, Cheryl. Here's what she did that blew me mind. I almost threw the Bible. I almost threw the Bible when I read this. The Bible said she wiped her tears off with her hair and kissed his feet and mixed her tears with perfume. Now, this perfume she only wore for special guests at night. But she says, this perfume is worth a little more than that. If you ever find out how much you are worth, you would stop wasting who you are on people who don't appreciate you. Oof. I feel the Holy Ghost. We may not get the service back. When you find out who you are, you gonna change the world. Oh yeah. You gonna flip this thing upside down because you let the wrong people define you when you find out who you are. I'm worth more than this, Jesus. I'm worth more than this. I'm worth more than this. I can hear her crying. I'm worth more than this. Anybody ever been there? I'm worth more than this. I'm worth more than this. I deserve better. 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 And she said it and to where she wanted to be. She spoke so positive to where she ended up at Jesus' feet. Which brings me to point four. Most of the people that started treating you funny <laughs> was because you take risk. Oh, I take risk. I take risk. Normally, normally, can we go? Normally, this oil was used on someone's head. Normally, the oil is used on someone's head. And all probability, can we talk? Can we talk? The woman intended, hear me, to anoint Jesus' head with her perfume. You ready? But because, um, um, because of the way she came in, like other participants, and Jesus reclined with his head toward the table, here it is, here it is, the closest the woman could come was to his feet. Oh, oh. Y'all didn't hear me. The closest she could come was to his feet. All right. Furthermore, furthermore, you ready? Can I talk about it? Do y'all know the word? Let's go. Let's go. It was a sin, Theo. And first century Palestine for women to have their hair out. Y'all see. So when she let her hair down. She said, all right, all right, I'm willing to risk it all. I don't care if they stone me. I don't care if they excommunicate me. In fact, Gerald, they done already put me out of the circle. Yeah, I don't got nothing to lose no way. I might as well take my hair down and make this worship official. I mean, come on here, somebody. I mean, if y'all want to throw me away because of that, you should have stole me. You come on here, somebody. When I was doing God knows what last week, come on here, somebody. And so you better not look at me like I need to keep my hair up when Jesus is in the room because somebody got to wipe the tears off and y'all ain't got no napkins. This first century Palestine here, let me use my hair. This will work. Come on.
all. She didn't care if she was getting her hair done. She did not care if her hair, come on somebody, was too long. She took that hair. I don't know how it looked, but it had to be long enough, Sister Addie, for her to wipe Jesus' feet with it. And you got to be a risk taker. There's got to be somebody on your road that would say, Pastor Dwight, I got to be honest with you, man. I ain't got nothing to lose. They done already took everything from me. They done stole everything. They repulled my car. They kicked me out the house. I'm going through a divorce. The kids acting crazy. I'm tired of living single. I smoked last night trying to feel happy. You don't know where I am. I, y'all ain't going to talk to the preacher. I'm going to get you because some of y'all are too still. I need some radical praise. The Lord said here, he said, you ain't got nothing to lose. That's what night of hope is. It's a risk. But when you've been rejected for so long and ostracized and people have talked about you and misused you and hurt you and never let you fit in their little circles, preacher circles, never been on their stages and they act like they don't see you but they do and when they mistreat you and hurt you it makes you feel a certain type of way so what God does is he bursts within you a risk taker and says you ain't gonna wait for nobody to invite you you gonna take this anointing to different cities and disperse it until they realize who they rejected most of the people that are rejecting you already know that you're anointed and gifted so they try to make you feel that you never fit in the circle but baby your rejection worked for my election God's gonna take what you did to me and work it out for me and I your neighbor and say God is about to raise you this season you gotta be a risk taker. Apply for the house. Knowing you might not get. Step out there and start a business with just a few dollars left in the bank. Answer the call to ministry while you still got an issue with drink. And I tell you, God will take your little risk and turn your little risk into a faith action. Because once you take a risk for Jesus, it somehow gets converted into faith. Yeah, Lord. And I preach like I feel it here. Everywhere. God ever brought me. I had to take a risk down there. I had to take a risk when I moved to Georgia. Didn't know nobody here. But I knew God would keep his hand on me. I had to take a risk when I got married. I still had issues and didn't know things were work. But I took a risk. I took another risk and started a business with hardly no money in the bank. And God took my risk and converted it into faith and rewarded my faith. I took another risk and started a Bible study in the business I took a risk with. And it converted into faith. I want to tell somebody that God can't do what he is going to do for you. It lets you take a risk. What really do you got to lose? They already don't like you. They already can't stand you. Yeah, boy, your neighbor. And your neighbor, neighbor. I ain't got nothing I gotta take a risk. Somebody shot step out there. Stop the business. Go get married. Make a change in the life. Apply for the house. Even though they denied 
preaching. I hear the Lord saying that the month of August is going to be your month when you step out and take a risk. Can I get into the word now? Do y'all remember Peter? He was on the boat all night and he was watching his neck and Jesus showed up and said, what you doing, bro? Get back out on the way. And Peter looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, I've been out here all night. I haven't called anything. But Jesus says, if you're going to roll with me, you got to take a risk. And they got in that boat and started sailing down the sea. And Jesus said, get out of the shallow area. Like, go a little deeper. I know you feel like you're stopping. But go a little deeper. Because what look crazy to you looks like a miracle to me. So Simon now got into the deep end. And Jesus told Simon, now pick up that same net that she was getting ready to watch and take another risk and throw it out on the lake. And you don't catch so many fish that your boat is going to begin to sink. Who I'm preaching to today, but the Lord said, I, 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 I need some risk takers. I need some people that are in the room. The Lord has been dealing with me. He said, Pastor Dwight. I said, Yes, Lord. He said, Pastor Dwight. I said, Yes, Lord. He said, I want you to stop having radical faith and start looking for a building. But don't look for the building based on where you are. Look for the building for where you see me go. Now that's going to take a risk because you're going to look at the finances and you're going to try to figure out how is this going to work. Yes, Lord. But I hear the Lord saying that. That God is about to take you to another level. Have all three people and say, take a risk. Take a risk. This is risk Sunday. I'm going to risk it all. 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 Why don't you stay with the marriage? I'm going to risk it all. You ain't gonna lose, I'ma risk it all. I ain't got nothing to risk it all. Y'all gotta help me. You gotta help me to preach. I don't know what's gonna happen here. For the last two Sundays, the Lord said, people been coming to church because they want to get fed. Blessed are those that are hungry and thirst after righteousness. But they shall, they shall have. But for the next three weeks, I feel a risk anointing on you. I feel an anointing for you to just take a risk. Somebody take two steps forward and say, I'm stepping out there. I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm going to risk it all. I'm going after it. I'm running towards it. I'm stepping in. My new blessing. You can laugh all you want. You can poke fire. You want, you can ignore me all you want, but I hear the Lord saying, Bless are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Take me how you are. I feel like the Lord is about to do a new thing. Elbow your neighbor and say a new thing. Say, August is going to be a new thing. Say, September is going to be.
Pharisees saw this woman, they said, if Jesus would have known the type of woman she is, she is a sinner, he would send her away. And the Lord said, give you five and we're done. He said, some people act funny because they can't handle your transformation. Jasmine, they couldn't understand that this was the same woman that y'all lied on and made fun of. And she's transforming in your face. I was, I was at Callaway Gardens on Monday with my kids. We went to the butterfly exhibit and I walked in and something stopped me right there at the entrance. And for those that have been there, I walked in at the butterfly exhibit and it said, Transformation Station. And it showed how a butterfly goes from a caterpillar into a cocoon and how the wings eventually begin to bud out of the cocoon it was in and it stretches out with a beautiful color and I don't know how many people have been judging you by your caterpillar stage but I see a room full of people who are about to fly. Oh, they're going to wonder. They're going to wonder, Jonathan, how you started the restaurant. Everybody, they're going to wonder how God brought you out. <laughs> they're going to wonder, Michael, how you move from here to there, bought your own house in just a year. Hey! There are some people around you right now that have no idea of your full potential. They start acting funny because you are always the one that they thought would remain crawling. But it'll be your neighbor, we done. And say, I got wings now. Hey! You will no longer see me walking with turtles. But I got eagles wings. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall bottom with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not faint. Here's my favorite part. They shall run and not get weary. Somebody shot up running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. And I will not stop. And I cannot stop. And I gotta keep going. I gotta keep pushing. I gotta keep believing. I gotta keep growing. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. But for some reason, while I'm running, I'm not getting tired. In fact, I feel stronger than ever. I feel greater than ever. I keep running, but I'm not getting tired. I'm not out of breath. I'm getting stronger and stronger. And the more they reject me, I keep running. And the more they hurt me, I'm going to keep running. And the more they keep fighting me, I'm going to keep running. Feel like the Holy Ghost Want somebody to realize Your strength is back Somebody shot run 
I need some women to stretch your hands. This is transformation for you. This is transformation for you. This is transformation for you. Be ye transformed. This is transformation for you. 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 You are not. Oh! trying to hit you. Somebody shout let the glory hit her. Get distracted. Oh no, don't get distracted. Oh, don't get distracted. Oh, see, there's a there's a release about to break loose. You, you ain't did it yet, but it's coming. Oh, somebody.
have a business? You plan on starting a business, aren't you? What kind of business? How soon you want to start it? You've been praying about it? Guess what? Next week begins the beginning of it. You already know the name? Do you have the articles incorporated? Do it next week. God says you're going to be the first, you live here, the first in this city to do what you're about to do. It's not going, you feel it, it's not even going to be like how you think it is. God's going to use it to birth multiple more businesses from you. He said the world needs you. Then he said you are the world's best kept secret. So the people that look over you, they got to come back and apologize because you are keeping their thing together while praying for them while they did mess. But I lay my hands on you, God should receive. I'm laying my hands on a multi-millionaire. You're not doing it for money, but God because God said because you're going to follow him, I'm going to bless you with what you need. And you're even going to go back and get some of your family members out that talked about you. Oh!
in this church you'll be elder dynamic and they will respect you as an elder ah! and you will lead people as an elder and you will instruct as an elder ah you can't run I had to pronounce it on you now and I'm going to give you credentials and we're going to give them together and I'm going to sign off on them and I'm going to hand them to you and you're going to frame them but I'm just confirming what God did already it ain't me, it's God alright, let's go ah. everybody say welcome Elder Donnell now point at him and say God's going to do more in the latter part than in the first part. Now somebody shy, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hey! And he also said, if you want, it's up to you. He said, if you want, it's only up to you. I'm going to let you open your own restaurant here. Only if you want to. Well, then it's yours. You already got your first clients. Woo! Hey! Hey! I gotta go. One more thing. This family right here on this road. Can y'all come? Come. This family, you all come. Come. Where are you guys from? Do y'all have a business? say never broke again say it ends today because of the prayers and the sacrifice of your family God says as of today 
I set upon you a wealth anointing. You will have everything your heart desires. The Lord says, it's a risk, but you got to trust me. I will do it. And the Lord says, because of your midnight prayers, you getting a double dose today. Because you kept stuff together and people didn't even know you was hurting because you smiled and you believed and you loved those people. Oh! double dose <laughs> now I'm going to put a it's going to be a double anointing on it now <laughs> you came with a heart oh! alright there are three people in here that are in some relationships you've been dating one another can I just help you don't want to call you out but listen to me I just want to help you so you know what direction to go in the Lord said that's not the one it ain't God's will and no matter how you keep trying to alter it it ain't God I just released you from something destructive. Father, we thank you today for your grace, for your mercy, and your love and your compassion. Thank you, Father, for this Yasha, this remarkable service. Thank you, Lord, that your anointing rest, rule, and abide over this ministry and over your people. In Jesus' name, amen. When you were up there, I wanted to tell you after service, but I am so proud of you. You've come a long way. And the Lord says, you'll never go back. It'll never be the same. You're going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. This church needs you. And the Lord says, you finally found the place where you can say I'm loved. And we love you back. If this word bless you, you say, Pastor, throughout the word I was led to give the Lord my heart. Repeat after me, say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you into my heart as Lord and personal Savior to renew and to guide me. Satan, I denounce you. You got no power, no authority over me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Last, if you did not have a chance to give, if you did not have a chance to give, you could still give at dollar sign, generation of hope. You can text the word give, that's on the screen. Or you can give at dollar sign, generation of hope, or you could still give in person. I want to say this. This church, the world, and in the months to come, you're going to
lay my hands on you because you're a musician. You hear me? What does he like to kind of dabble with? Huh? Because he's going to play everything. <laughs> you're going to play everything skillfully. I anoint you now in Jesus' name. Amen, somebody. Let's receive our announcements. Our closing announcements. Amen. Here today, said Pastor Dwight, I want to accept Generation Hope Church as my church home. And you're saying, listen, I've been out of church for a while, but I need a church home. There is no such thing as a perfect church, but there is a place where you can grow in Jesus. If that's you, without even thinking, just come down the aisle. We're going to welcome you into this ministry. Amen. If you're saying, I want to come join the Generation Hope, come on, y'all. Come on here. Hey, come on here. My God, my God. Hey, man, somebody. Teresa came with her children. Hey, man, y'all. Anyone else to say, I want to come make Generation Hope Church my church home? Now, some of y'all have been visiting, and when you come, you keep saying, I keep feeling the glory. And then you'll leave thinking you'll feel it again. Do you know the glory cloud only rests on certain places? And Generation Hope Church is one of them. And I want to invite you now to come join this ministry. Look at your neighbor and say, if you need me to walk with you, I will. Come on. Look at him and say, if you need me to walk with you, I will. Come on, look at him and say, come on, come on, I'll walk with you. If that's you, come now, come now, come now, come now, come now, come now, come now. Well, let's thank the Lord that this beautiful family has come on today. And I'm just going to quickly give Teresa the mic. And I know people know you, but I just want to give you the mic and just let us know what led you to come down. I've been hollering on mine. I'm from South Carolina. So like, I just I just want to thank God for working in my son to work in me. Cause you never know what you really need. Like I I, I never really understand sometimes how why I love my kids the way I love them. But it's when I'm in my hardest times with my kids that God will send the word through them. And I'm just blessed. I love being here. Every Sunday is full of glory. I love it. And like he said, every house ain't a glory house. But this is one, and I'm glad to be a part. Let's thank the Lord. Amen. Let's welcome our new sister on today. Amen. Amen. Y'all are going to go over there, my sister Addie, and she's going to get your info. And you're already family to us, but we'll, we'll do, do protocol. Amen, somebody. Come on, Sister Angela. for his presence. Um, we just have a few quick announcements. Our church picnic will be held today at Oakhurst Park Pavilion in Decatur, Georgia. Meet us for a day of food and fun at 4 p.m. So we're expecting all of you to, to come and fellowship with us on this afternoon. Our new members cohort began this morning. If you are new to the Generation of Hope, Hope Nation, join us next Sunday at 9 a.m. for service. And I just want to...
want to say our first cohort, it was amazing. It was amazing. The Holy Spirit met us there we, when we were just introducing ourselves. The Holy Spirit came in. So if you are new, come and join our class. Um, all roads lead to New Hope for the City of Chicago this Friday. Woo! Check, check out Instagram for more information. Our second annual gas giveaway will be this uh, will be Saturday, August 12th. We are in need of volunteers to assist us with this community outreach event. We will meet here at the church and carpool over at 7.30 p.m. You are invited to start your mornings with us in prayer at 6.30, Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. Meet us and we, amen. That's that's another, that's another, that's another. That's all I can say, that's another. Amen, amen. Tuesday night, Bible study at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Those are your nine announcements. And we will now have our closing prayer. Amen. Please stand as we have our benediction. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you did in this place today, Father God. We thank you for how your Holy Spirit met us, how it moved, Father God, and how it sent us to places higher in you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for reminding us today, Lord Jesus, that sometimes people begin to act funny when we move closer into your will, Father God. Lord Jesus, as we pursue you, Father God, as we pursue your great name and your calling, Father God, Lord Jesus, I... I ask that you not allow us to be distracted, Father God, by how people perceive us or how people act, Father God. But instead, let us allow that to make us draw closer to you. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you for your anointing that is on each and every one of us, Father God. The anointing to change our lives and change the lives of those who are around us, Father God. Lord Jesus, I thank you this morning for the crushing. I thank you for the breaking. I thank you for the tearing, Father God, that produces the oil that we need to live our lives, Father God, and pursue your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I just thank you this morning for gathering our tears, Lord Jesus, and using them to fertilize our future. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that you are always with us and you never leave us, Father God. Even though the world may not see us sad or the world may not see us cry, Father God. You see those things, Lord Jesus, and you still stay with us, Father God. So we thank you for that today. Hallelujah. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you even during difficult seasons and difficult times, Father God. You remain with us. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful Father, and we love you today, Father God. Again, this morning, we thank you for the anointing that fell on this place. Lord, we ask that you keep us safe as we go. We ask that you allow us to have wonderful and holy and wholesome fellowship as we gather together in your great name. Have a great day.